What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're going to be continuing our new Golden Age comic book conservation project on this copy of All Star Comics number 55 from 1950. Today, we're going to have a look at some results. We have the two inner wraps that we rapid wet cleaned in a fraction of the time we normally spend, plus heat pressed while still damp to cut drying time from two days down to four hours. And we're going to compare those wraps to the first inner wrap, which we cleaned and dried with our traditional method to see if there's any discernible difference. And then we'll have a look at how the cover turned out after our cleaning, deacidification, archival paper mending, and drying procedures. I'm really anxious to see if we had any dimensional changes in the cover after all of our conservation efforts. And if we have time, we'll also trim the excess Tengujo paper from the cover in this video. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button. If you are subscribed to the channel, thank you sincerely. If you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified when we have new videos going up. And if you're not subscribed yet, please do so. It helps us reach a wider audience here on YouTube and create more of a community around our favorite hobby, comic book conservation. In case you missed it, in episode one of this series, we did a complete walkthrough of the book, assessed the condition, paying special attention to any defects that affect grade, as well as use of the comic book and permanence of the paper. We determined we had a mostly solid and complete comic book that presented reasonably well and could be read with some care, but with some significant flaws. These include a severe spine roll, a piece missing to the cover, some chipping along the right edge of the front cover, and a severely tanned cover to the point of the paper being brown in the most severely tanned areas. The interior pages were, for the most part, beautiful, with off-white to cream pages and only a few minor flaws, including a pulled top staple on the centerfold and a few very small tears on the reading edge of the first few wraps. We estimated the grade at approximately a 3.0 or good, very good. We developed a conservation plan for this comic book that includes assessment and documentation, disassembly, wet clean and deacidification of the cover with tear seals and paper reinforcement, and the same treatment of the interior wraps as well. After we get everything cleaned, mended, and dried back out, we'll reassemble the book without the spine roll and give it a good finishing press. If the conservation is successful, we can expect a comic book that has cleaner and brighter paper with a new lease on life, usability, and permanence. The comic should have an improved grade and also be easier to read without risking further damage, and the natural lifespan of the comic should be extended by a century or so by virtue of the deacidification we'll perform. It should also present much better and all around be a better collectible. I intend to send it to CGC to be graded and enter it into my CGC registry collection as a placeholder until I can find a high-grade copy of this rare comic book for my collection. In episode 2 of this project, we disassembled the comic book, setting the staples aside for reassembly, preserving their location and orientation information. Then, we did a few more measurements of the paper quality and dimensions of the cover and set it aside for deacidification tear seals, and reinforcement at a later date. In episode 3, we did an aqueous deacidification bath of the first interior wrap with a calcium hydroxide solution and also performed archival tear seals with Japanese paper and a methylcellulose glue. These methods are reversible and considered by CGC as conservation, so when performed correctly, do not result in a purple, restored label if you submit to CGC for grading, which we intend to do with this book. In episode four, we reviewed the results from our wet clean and tear seal procedures on the first inner wrap, 
and I showed you the method I use for washing the rest of the inner wraps in a fraction of the time by washing two wraps at a time and using a surfactant and warm water. I also showed you how to use a heated press to speed up dry time dramatically. This Golden Age treasure has 12 inner wraps plus the cover, so these techniques will help us get the entire book conserved in a reasonable amount of time so we can get it off to CGC. In episode 5, we returned to work on the cover. We took some additional measurements of the dimensions of the cover, and then we wet cleaned and deacidified the cover before moving on to paper mending. We reinforced the entire spine with Japanese paper and methyl cellulose glue. We also performed tear seals and reinforced the right edge of the front cover where there was considerable damage to the paper owing to the significant spine roll this book experienced at some point in its nearly 74 year history. I've created a playlist for this project. You can check it out to see all the videos in the series by following the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. All right, I'm excited to see some results today. First thing we're going to do is retrieve these two inner wraps from my seal press. So they're in depth wise here. That's an 11 by 17 sheet of card stock. And it doesn't fit width wise. As a reminder, this is Strathmore Bristol 11 by 17. It's a hundred pound card stock. It's what I do all my finishing presses in for loose wraps. And I have a link in the description where I buy it from Amazon. Boy, this page looks beautiful, doesn't it? So this went through our rapid clean and dry. And my biggest concern is, is it gonna match up well with the wrap that we did by our more traditional wet clean deacidification and drying process which takes us over two days five total washes and two days it took and these pages were done in about four hours total so what I want to do is get these and have a inspection here make sure that they're nice and flat look at the page quality, make sure I don't have any wrinkles from my heated damp press, I'll call it, because it wasn't really wet. And they look beautiful to me. Supple, nice feel, nice card to them. I'm very happy with this outcome, but the real test will be putting it next to that first wrap and also looking at the Overstreet whiteness level card on this page and just see how clean the paper is. So on the bottom I have the first wrap that went through five total washes, two day drying process. I was concerned it might be whiter than the other two. I think ironically it's a little darker than the other two. It is natural for the first wrap to be a little darker than deeper interior wraps because it is exposed to a bit more oxidation. I also have still that darkness on the left of this wrap where we use the methyl cellulose glue and I think I mixed my glue up a little bit thicker and I think I just put it on too thick. I wasn't used to that. So that slight discoloration on the left which I think is harsher here under this light than it is under natural light is due to that. If we look at the pages with an owl card You'll see that in the center we have off-white paper and on the edges it's cream to maybe tan at the very extreme edge of the paper on the first wrap. Recall that we didn't do any explicit bleaching, either photo bleaching or chemical bleaching of these wraps. We just cleaned them and deacidified them. I wasn't looking for super white pages here and I really like the pleasing sort of warm tone of this paper. So I'm very pleased and I'm very happy that our sped up process worked equally well, if not potentially a little better than our longer traditional process for deacidification and drying. Beautiful. Now let's have a look at the cover. Here is the interior cover after cleaning, deacidification, 
cold press and heated press and I think it looks pretty good it's just as I pulled it out of the press on that same Bristol paper that I showed you with the interior wraps obviously we haven't trimmed the Tengujo yet this is you seeing it with me for the very first time I'm really pleased with this outcome it looks beautiful to me. Let's have a look at the obverse, the exterior. We kept these beautiful, vivid inks where we had the red, the orange, even the pink around this planet and from the spaceship. And that was one of my goals. This is why we minimized the amount of washing we did and why we didn't use any bleaching chemical photo or otherwise. I'm really thrilled with this outcome, so let's trim this excess Tengujo paper. I'm using a number three scalpel handle with a number 11 blade, and I'm going to get a fresh blade, and I just want to show you how to remove this. If you remove this with your hands and slip, you are likely to cut yourself to the bone, so don't do it. Use a pair of pliers, remove the blade like that. Now in contrast for putting a new blade on, I do use my hands. I just never figured out how to do it with forceps or pliers. I'm holding it on the side away from the sharp edge. And this here part, there's no force at all. And then I switch to the bottom and I pull away from the blade. And I think that's safe enough. All right, now that I have a fresh blade, let's trim this page. It looks nice the way it is, but I think it's going to look really sharp trimmed up properly. I'm going to turn my magnifying ring light on and adjust it, get myself comfortable. I do not trust my trimming just to the naked eye or to just regular room lighting, so I have really intense LED lighting and a 10x magnification here. I do have a link to the one that I have in the description if you are looking for one. And I found it's a must to get this trimmed just perfectly. You obviously don't want to cut. I'm going to trim this little crescent out where we had just Tengujo paper because we at some point in the history of this book lost that and I like to trim every last little fiber so it's just a nice clean edge it is a treat to use a fresh blade and it may look like I'm using a lot of force there but I'm really just barely dragging the blade over that Tengu Joe and I see just a few more stray fibers, so I'm going to go ahead and trim those. This cover looks beautiful, doesn't it? Look at the vibrancy of these inks. 74-year-old ink. Super vibrant. Beautiful. I'm really glad we didn't take it too far with the wash here. So as I was saying, I'm really just barely dragging this scalpel along this Tengujo. Although it is strong, it cuts easily with a sharp blade. Much more easily than the comic book does. So, as long as you're not pushing really hard, it's difficult to trim the comic accidentally here. Especially when you take all these precautions. Use a clear ruler so you can see through it. That's the best way to really see the edge precisely. There was a lot going on with this edge. A lot of jagged, broken pieces. Some tears. Some stuff missing. So I'm going to just start by cutting myself a nice straight line through that section making sure I don't have any stray fibers. Tengujo is made from fibers from a mulberry tree of all things. 
and it's why it's recognized as one of the strongest, lightest papers manufactured anywhere in the world. Sourced exclusively from Japan. I was thinking about freehanding. I'm going to cut out the Tengujo in this little corner too, because it's just a thin flap. It's not doing anything for us here. And I also don't want to give CGC an excuse to give us a purple label for peace fill. Conservation only allows peace fill with leaf casting. So we don't want to leave any visible Tengujo beyond something that bridges a very small gap. So I'm going to trim the same here. The corner here is clipped at about a 45 degree angle. So there's actually three cuts to be made here. This one's pretty straight, so I'll use the straight edge again. And again, just a very light drag of the scalpels, all that's required for this. Now I thought I could use a straight edge, but I'm going to have to freehand this because it's not straight. So again, a light drag right along the edge. The scalpel actually doesn't want to cut the paper, the original comic book paper that is. And it's actually not that difficult to get a nice tight cut along that edge and only cut the Tengujo away. So that's a clean look. That's what I was looking for here. A couple of thin little gaps here. Again, I don't want to leave Tengujo showing from the exterior of the book. So I'm going to cut this little piece out. And it's not structural, it's just a little flap sitting out there anyway. Satisfied with that edge now. I'm going to cut out this window for the same reason. I do not want to give CGC an excuse to give me a purple label for a piece fill, which is technically what this is. And if it's not leaf casted, then it's going to be restoration. So we will remember to breathe and just relax and very carefully cut this out. Again, I wouldn't attempt this with the naked eye or without really good lighting or a very sharp scalpel. And this is where this number 11 that has almost a needle point, a very sharp point, the blade comes in handy and really cutting almost jigsaw style around the existing paper of the cover. Just one more cut ought to do it and I'll get this out of the way and you'll see this thin gap bridged by Tengujo paper right there. That's fine. That's not going to be considered a piece fill. But a piece that might be almost a quarter wide by almost a half inch long. And here you can see that it's reinforced on all four sides by Tengujo. So it's a nice strong repair, structural. But now when you look at the book from the exterior, you're going to see that little window. You're not going to see the Tengujo. It's not going to look like a piece fill. It's just going to look like the book experienced some damage at some point in its life. Done with my magnifying ring light. I'm going to turn that off and get it out of the way. You can see the Tengujo repair is visible from the interior, but that's actually where the rest of the wraps are going to be folded in. So that's going to be hidden. And of course, here from the exterior, no evidence whatsoever of our Tengujo paper repair. Let's have a look at some still images. Here is the interior of the cover before washing and obviously the Tengujo repairs. Here is the after. It is brightened up a little bit. It is just a little bit lighter. The Tengujo repair down the center where we reinforce the spine is noticeable, but again, the wraps are going to be tucked in there. It's going to be hidden. 
The one along the left edge is actually much less noticeable. That's the one you're going to see when you're reading the book. Let's have a look at the paper quality. Here again is the before, and you can see that this paper to my eye is tan, and after deacidification and washing, it's clearly lighter colored, somewhere between off-white and light tan to my eye. So we've gone up at least one, if not two steps in paper quality here on this edge. Here is the before image for the darkest part of the interior of this cover. This is right below the indicia. Remember, it's darker than the darkest brown on the Overstreet Whiteness Level card. Here's the after, and it is subtly brighter, but it's still probably darker than the darkest color here on the Overstreet Whiteness Level card. And this was intentional on my part. I did not want to bleach this paper because I didn't want to lose those vibrant inks on the front. So we went for a very subtle, effective cleaning here, just lightening it up, leaving this warm patina to the paper. And here, looking at the whole page, even on a brilliant white background, I don't regret that. I think it was the right thing for this book. Now let's get that measurement vertically. We saw 10 inches and exactly one quarter. Recall that the concern here was some dimensional changes in the book with the full submersion wet cleaning. And I'm happy to say absolutely no change whatsoever in the vertical measurement. We've measured 10 inches and one quarter, and here we are with a finished page 10 inches and exactly one quarter. So that seems like a big win. Let's check the width now. Remember, conventional wisdom is that we will see expansion in the width, contraction in the height. So we didn't see any contraction in the height. Let's check out a precise measurement of the width here. Our starting measurement was 14 and 5 30 seconds. This looks like 14 and 7 30 seconds to me. So this is about a sixteenth of an inch wider. That is what is expected. However, we had, remember, a lot of crinkling in that severely rolled spine. I'm not convinced we didn't just flatten that spine out. And in any case, a sixteenth of an inch over the overall width when folded is going to be one thirty-second of an inch. That's not even going to be visible. Remember that we had slightly wider here by about a thirty-second of an inch. We were at 14 and 3 sixteenths in our initial measurement here at the top third of the book. And now we are at 14 and 1 quarter. So this is also 1 sixteenth of an inch wider here than our initial measurement of our severely spine rolled and wrinkled cover. I'm counting this as a huge win. I'm not even convinced that it isn't just a flattening out of the crinkles and wrinkles in the paper and not a true widening of the cover with the aqueous bath. I'm really thrilled with these outcomes, both with the nice match for the first wrap on the pages that we did our quick clean and dry on, and also with the way this cover turned out. It's just beautiful. I have just the centerfold to wet clean and perform the staple hole repair, and then we'll be putting all these wraps back together replacing the staples, reforming the spine, and giving this book a final press and sending it off to CGC. Stay tuned for the next episode soon, and please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the progress so far. Were you as surprised as I was that we didn't get any substantial dimensional changes with the submersion bath we performed on this cover? Most of the materials I use today are available from Amazon, in the affiliate links in the video description if you need any of them for your own conservation efforts. And if you enjoyed this video, please take a few seconds to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, take care of one another.